Lesson 32, trig functions of acute angles. What we're going to do in this lecture is we're going to bridge between last time, which was similar triangles, and next time, which is we're going to do, oh, you may have heard this phrase before, but we're going to do Sokotoa stuff. We're going to actually be doing some real using trig to solve triangle type stuff next time. So this is kind of the bridge lecture in between those two things. What I want to do is I want to give you the motivation for the trig functions, first of all, and then we have to get used to like figuring out which one's which and stuff. And that's just some basic drill. So it's, I think it's worth it to take a day of drill for that. But first, example one, let's, let's try to motivate this. Where does trig come from? And I might be wrong. It might not come from Greece. It might come from Egypt or Sumer or something. But let's just assume it comes from Greece because then we can put ourselves in a boat with Jason and the Argonauts. I've heard it say that the, the Greeks were good at using math for navigating, right, with their boats, because they had the Mediterranean, they were floating all over the place, they needed to navigate. And all of a sudden they said, you know what, this math stuff, this is useful. And here's an example. You're in a boat with Jason and the Argonauts. And you can see the city of Troy straight ahead, due east. And you also see this curious geological structure called the Rock of Hercules. And you know that the Rock of Hercules is located 100 ancient Greek miles due north of Troy. Okay, So you see Troy, you see the rock. You know the distance between Troy and the rock. How far are you from Troy? Now, this is a challenge problem. So we're going to have to get a visual on this. So let's just say here you are in your boat. And we'll make a simple boat. Well, might as well have a sail on it, I suppose. We got a boat, so that's where you are. And then it says you can see Troy, so somewhere is due east, so I'm going to just represent east as that way. And here's the city of Troy, so sort of make some sort of a city of Troy thing over here. Probably got some like steps or something, who knows what it's got. Troy. And then you can also see the Rock of Hercules. Now you know the Rock of Hercules, it's a curious formation. It's like a cliff and there's this big rock on it, and it just you just look at it and you say, somebody should tip it off. I'll bet you Hercules put it there. So anyway, that's the Rock of Hercules. And we know that the distance from the Rock of Hercules down to Troy is exactly 100 ancient Greek miles. Hey, you know what else we know? Didn't we say this was due east? If this is due east and that's due north, we got a 90 degree angle right there. So I'm trying to make that look like a 90 degree angle. Maybe I have to switch colors. So that's a 90 degree angle right there. Cool, and I suppose, you know, we've been playing with triangles. Let's do it. Let's draw the triangle. There, we got a triangle. We happen to have what's called a right triangle. That's what you call it when one of the sides is 90 degrees, because see, it's like this side is standing straight upright. Get it? So anyway, here we are. And uh, the whole question was, how far are we from Troy? So that's like saying I got to solve for x. Well, I think I drew out all the information there. We're in the boat. That's over That's over here. Uh, we see the city of Troy straight ahead due east. That's over here. The ancient geological structure is due north, 100 miles. Got it. How far are you from Troy? Do you see how to solve this problem? Give you a hint. We don't quite have all the information we need in front of us. This is what you call one of those open-ended problems. So you have to picture yourself actually in the boat, however many thousand, two and a half thousand years ago or whatever. You got some tools on the boat. You got some paper, maybe a pen of some sort, an ancient Greek pen, whatever they look like. Uh, you know, maybe a ruler, maybe a compass, something like that. Maybe a protractor. How do you like that? We got a protractor. So we got some tools on board, paper, pen, ruler, compass, protractor. So um, hmm. this is a fun question. I like to pose this to my classes. I've been doing this for like almost 20 years and I've had only like three classes in 20 years. So that's like three out of 40. <laughs> only like three out of 40 did somebody actually get it. So uh, if you get it, congratulate yourself. Let me sort of give you the clues here. It's a triangle. We'd like to solve for that side of a triangle. Last time we were talking about similar triangles. So wouldn't it be nice to have a similar triangle? It would have to be similar means that that angle would have to be a 90 because this angle is a 90 
and whatever this angle is, that angle would have to be the same, right? And by default, the leftover angle would be the same. Where are we going to get that green triangle? And the breakthrough, the eureka moment, is to say, I'll draw one for goodness sakes. I'll just draw one on my paper here. I got paper, I got pen, I got ruler. And the protractor helps. What you can do is you can go outside the boat for a little minute and you take a little angle reading here. You're going to have to get that angle reading. So measure it by hand with the protractor, and I have no idea what that is. Let's just say it's, you know what, I'm going to call it theta. That's a Greek letter theta. I should draw a better theta than that. Theta. That's a Greek letter that stands for the TH sound. So they call it theta. Um, and, just, and then you can draw a triangle on paper that has the 90 degrees here. It has the same angle theta here. And then here's the cool thing. You just get out your ruler and you measure the dimensions of this darn thing. So maybe this darn thing over here has a, I don't know, uh, let's make this, uh, you know, you draw a nice big triangle because you're trying to be accurate. So this has like 8.5 ancient Greek inches. And maybe this side here is like a 3.75 ancient Greek inches. I don't know. I'm just making it up. And then you say, I've got a similar triangle and I'm going to solve the problem now. Because you can tell this side corresponds to this side. You can tell this side corresponds to this side, right? All the angles are the same. That's how we know that it's a similar triangle. We can start doing the old cross the sides trick. So I want X. Okay, so we've got similar triangles here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cross the triangle, and I think I'll cross this triangle this way. I want to involve the X, and I want to involve the number that I know. So I either have to cross up or I have to cross down, and I'm just going to choose to cross down. doesn't matter, really. And then on this triangle, what does matter is that you cross the same sense over here as you did over there. So since I kind of went up to down, I have to kind of go up to down. Okay. Blink, blink. Okay. And then we can set up our proportion real quick. So over here on this triangle, we've got... 100 over the x, right? As I was crossing, I saw 100, and then I saw an x, 100 over x. And then on this triangle, as I'm crossing, I see a 3.75, and then I see an 8.5. And now we can do the old rule of 3, 100 times 8.5. Uh, let's do it this way. 100 times button, 8.5, divide by button, 3.75. And you've got your answer, so let's see what that is. Because now I'm curious. Right? Okay, so 100 times the 8.5, and then I have to divide by the 3.75, and I end up with, uh, you know, 226, and it says 0.6 repeating, so I'll round that up to a 0.7-ish. So you are still about 226 miles from Troy. Huh. I hope they had telescopes back then, because I don't think you would be able to see that by eye. You'd probably have to be up here standing on the top of the mast and everything. But anyway, let's just assume, well, and we don't even know how big an ancient Greek mile is anyway, right? Right. So let's just say that's a realistic answer. Woohoo, we're done. <clears throat> so it's about 226, 227 miles away. Now, ain't that something? And I'd love to have been the, you know, the, the first guy to thought of this. That must have been kind of a cool feeling. You're like, wow, man, I used like paper and pencil to figure this out. Woo, this is great. I used like numbers and, you know, similar triangles and I figured it out, man. I figured it out. And then what you can do now that you've got this idea is you can do things like, um, geez, I can never find a good color. Let's try this one. You can do things like say, you know, pretty soon we're going to be a little bit closer to Troy. And I'm going to want to do it again, right? I'm going to be over here, and I'm going to want to do it again. So what I can do is I can right now draw my triangle and get it set up so that, you know, maybe when we get to the point where this is a 45-degree angle, I can just grab my dimensions, and, and then I'll make another one for when we're so close that it's a 60-degree angle. And so and you can imagine, you know, just saying, like, right on I right now, draw a whole bunch of triangles. I'll keep track of my... Uh, you know, my angles and stuff. So maybe I'll say when I'm at 45 degrees, the bottom is this much. And I don't know how much you want to go. Maybe you, you do like five degrees at a time or something, you know, you can make like a, you can make like a little table of values. So, um, and I'm not going to put the numbers in here. I'm not going to draw the triangles and measure, but you can imagine just, you put some kind of number in here that measures when this angle is 40 the bottom way, the bottom number is this, the side number is this. And then if you want to be real clever about it, uh, um, you could also include the ratio because 
that's what that's what this is it's the ratio of the call that the side call that the bottom it's the ratio of the side to the bottom if you know this that's good enough just know the ratio so so if you want to get fancy about it you don't just put the bottom and the side you put the, the ratios now this ratio says side over bottom because that's the way I did it and by the way this got a name this ratio of side to bottom is called a tangent okay you can kind of ignore this for now because I'm just trying to get you up towards what we really did what we really did or what somebody did is they said okay yeah I like this idea of having a table of values like this where I can just for every angle I can look up dimensions I don't really need to look up actual dimensions the ratios will be fine I need the ratios and so they had to define ratios and I already told you that this ratio when you cross the triangle this way is called the tangent of the angle and we write it that way tan is short for tangent the word is tangent the way you say that is tangent of theta and the way you write it as a shortcut is tan theta it means the tangent of theta and what it means is this this side here whatever its length is divided by this side here whatever its length is so for the triangle that we had up here I don't even know what the ratio was I guess I could write it down it was 3.75 divided by 8.5 this ratio was about well this ratio was about 0.4418 or something and you can say oh when you have that angle this ratio would be 0.4418. Okay, but I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, so let's let's do this. We're going to define three, actually, three trig ratios, and I'm erasing this just to clean up and start with a nice clean slate. So let's let's uh, let's let's orient ourselves a little bit. We must have a right angle. You must have a right angle. This, the trig ratios don't work if, if this is not a right triangle. Okay, it, it assumes we have a right triangle, so a right angle. Now here's the theta that we're interested in. So this is my eyeball. This is your point of view. If I were up here instead, I'd get different answers. So you gotta make pay attention to which angle you're talking about. And so this angle here is what I'm talking about. Okay, that's my point of view. Here's the right angle, here's my point of view. Now, from that point of view, we can give the names of this triangle, I mean, excuse me, give the sides of this triangle names. Now, you probably know what the name of this one is. I'm sure you've heard this word before. This is called the hypotenuse. Okay, it's the big side. Notice the hypotenuse is across the triangle from the 90 degree. So that's one way to find your hypotenuse. Um, but it's the biggest side. It's always the biggest side. Okay, now we need a name for this side over here. This side is going to be called the opposite side. Why do we call it the opposite side? Because it's opposite from where we are. We're over here someplace, right? This is supposed to be an eyeball. We're over here someplace. Well, if you come through the middle of the triangle all the way to the opposite side, and then you say, what should I call this side? opposite comes to mind. You say, that's the opposite side. Woo, that's the opposite side. So we call that the opposite side. No, remember what I was saying, that, that your point of view matters, right? Obviously, if I was standing up here, I'd get a different opposite side, right? This would be the opposite side. But that's, uh, that's not what we're doing for this triangle. For this triangle, our point of view is definitely over here. And so that is definitely the opposite side for that angle. Okay. What are we going to call this side? Well, you're right next to it, and it's not the hypotenuse. We call it adjacent. Okay, so these three triangles, or, or these three sides, have names: opposite, adjacent, hypotenuse. The opposite and the adjacent are always the two smaller sides. The hypotenuse is always the biggest side. The opposite is always way across from the to the other side of your triangle, like this. Whoa! If you're standing here at theta, you go through the middle of the triangle until you get to the other side, which we call the opposite side. Okay, that's the biggest stunt that you need to be able to 
do over and over is to be able to find that opposite side accurately. Usually people find the hypotenuse okay. And if there's ever any doubt, just say, well, the hypotenuse is across from the 90. But, um, but yeah, there's the hypotenuse, there's the opposite, there's the adjacent. Okay, now that they have names, now we can define the trig functions this way. There's a little phrase called Sokotoa. And Sokotoa goes like this. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. That's what it means. The sine of theta is the opposite over the hypotenuse. That's what that says. Sine of theta is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So that would mean for this triangle, I would want to go from this side over to this side. So you'd be crossing your triangle in this sort of a sense. So I don't know how big this side is, let's just say it's a 3. And I don't know how big this side is, I'll just say it's a 5. So the sine of this angle would be 3 over 5 actually. And if you want to make a decimal out of it, you can make a decimal out of it, 0.6. The sine of that angle is 3 fifths. I'm not necessarily, well, I guess you could use your calculator to go 3 divided by 5. But uh, your calculator has sine, cosine, tangent buttons on them, but we're not using those right now. That's later. I'm just, I'm just defining what is the sine of that angle. The sine of that angle is the ratio of this length over this length. 3 over 5, and 3 over 5 is a fraction. 0 0.6 is the decimal form. That's how you do the sine. S-O-H for sine. Now, can you think what... C-A-H might stand for. Well, C stands for cosine. So the cosine of the angle is A-H, adjacent over hypotenuse. So if this is your point of view, and it is, I'd want to take its adjacent and go over the hypotenuse. So notice, just like when we were playing with similar triangles, there's this idea of crossing the triangles, right? You cross the triangles in a certain way. And what we're doing now is we're just, we're building ratios. We're, we're actually recording the ratios. I'm going to say that's a 4. And so in this case, the cosine of this angle, this angle, the cosine of that angle is 4 over 5. Or if you want a decimal, 0.8. It's exactly 0.8. Okay, now we need a, another one. What is this TOA stand telling me? Well, T is for tangent. And maybe I'll have to I'll put it over here. The tangent of theta is OA, opposite over adjacent. Okay. Opposites here, adjacent's here. Opposite over adjacent. So this is your tangent. Maybe I should be labeling these. That's the tangent of theta. This was the cosine of theta. And this was the sine of theta. Okay, cool. Back to the green. The tangent of theta, toa, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So in this case, you would take, you would say that the tan theta, tangent of theta, is the opposite side has a length of three, the adjacent side has a length of four. It's three fourths, or as a decimal, it would be exactly 0 0.75. That's how you do it. Now the um, so get back to that guy that was making the tables, right? What you could do, actually, give me a second here. I got to get up my ruler. <clears throat> okay, let's make a triangle that has like maybe a 30 degree for theta. Let's make another triangle that has like maybe a 35 degree for triangle. Another one that has like maybe a 40 degree. Another one that has the 45 degree. Okay, so different problem, right? I'm making four different triangles now. I'm going to make one where this is 30 degrees, and I'm going to make one where this is 35 degrees, and I'm going to make one where this is 40 degrees, and so on. And I'm going to measure the sides. Um, so let's say I have a 30 degree triangle. Now the, the, the trick that we tend to do is we tend to say, okay, let me, let me just kind of erase these and make some space. I want to draw one at a time. Let's say we had the 30 degree angle right here, 30 degrees. 
and we have a right triangle. Usually when people in practice when they do this is they say, let's make sure that side has a length of one. Now it turns out that if you make that side a length of one, this side will have a length of exactly 0.5. I'll write 0 0 0.500. And then this side will have a length of exactly, or not exactly, but pretty close to 0.866. So if you built yourself a 30 degree triangle so that you could fill in the table, if you made this side, side have a length of one on purpose, then this side would measure to 0 0.500, this side would measure to 0.866. And you could try that if you want. Get yourself a protractor, get yourself a ruler, make a right triangle, make a 30 degree angle, make it exactly one, you know, whatever, one something that way, one inch. I guess you'd want bigger than an inch, really. One foot. You'd say, well, this is going to be 0.5 feet, exactly six inches. This is going to be 0.866 feet, however many inches that is. Then we can start entering into our table. Now the sine of 30 is the opposite over the hypotenuse, that way. And that tells me that the sine is 0.5 divided by 1. The sine of 30 degrees is 0 0.500. Now you can see why we put the 1 there. It makes the sine and cosine kind of easy. Um, okay, now let's do the cosine. The cosine is supposed to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And we'll practice identifying opposite adjacent hypotenuse later. For now, just dig, dig as I make the table here. So the cosine is going to be 0.866. And by the way, the tangent, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. The tangent would be this ratio, opposite over adjacent. I'd actually have to take the 0.5 and divide it by the 0.866, and I'm getting just about 0.577 for my tangent. You can do it again for 35 degrees, and I did do it again for 35 degrees, and if you trust me, this is 0.574, and then if you made it with 35 degrees, the bottom would be 0.819, and then if you took the, the uh, you'd have to take the 0.574 and divide it by the 0.819, you'd get just about 0 0.700. And you could do it for 40 degrees. Uh, let's see now here. If I made a 40 degree triangle with a hypotenuse of 1, and I measured the side and the bottom, and then I did the ratio in the same way, this is going to be a 0.642, no, 0.643 maybe. This is going to be maybe a 0.766. If you divide those two, you should get just about a 0.839. And good enough. We don't have to do the 45. Although you might have this memorized someday. This will come up so much you're going to be amazed. I just happen to have that memorized. <laughs> so the sine of 45 is 0 0.707. The cosine is the same, and that's because of 45, 45, 90. You know, it's, it's the same whether you go this way or that way. <clears throat> And uh, the tangent, well, it's 1 because, if you, again, if you have a 45, 45, 90, these sides are both the same, so the tangent is 1. Okay. Now, it used to be in the old days you'd have a nice big table, nice big trig table hanging on the wall of your math classroom. And you'd have another nice big trig table in the back of your math book. And you might even have one in a pocket size thing that you carried around with you all the time. It used to be, this is what we did. We had the big trig table. Now notice how we can use this trig table. Back to our, uh, well, just looking at this problem, for example. This triangle here, we were saying that the sine was 0.6. What I can do is I can come down here and say, oh, the sine is 0 0.6, huh? 0 0.5, too small. 0 0.574, too small. 0 0.643, too big. It's in here somewhere. So you can kind of say, well, it's got to be between 35 and 40 degrees. So that theta up there is between 35 and 40 degrees. So you can just find the angle that way. 
Um, of course, if you wanted to find it more accurately, you'd get a more accurate table, one that maybe went one degree at a time, or maybe it went 0.1 degrees at a time. Anyway, you could you could look it up pretty accurately. You could do the same thing. You say, oh, the cosine is 0.8. Yeah, cosine is 0.8, right about there. It has to be the same angle. It's got to be right about there. Tangent is 0.75, right? Yeah, it's right about there somewhere, right? That's one way to use the table, and the other way to use the table is if you're out, if you're if you happen to be with with Jason and the Argonauts in your boat, <laughs> you draw your triangle, and you, or, and you or you measure your angle. Really, if you measure the angle is 35 degrees, you don't have to measure the sides because somebody already did that and they put the information down in this nice table. Okay, this kind of thing we'll actually get practice with next time. The idea of using the trig tables to actually help us solve right triangles. That's for next time. So if it seems like I'm going a little fast, it's because I'm going a little fast because I'm just trying to give you a, a, a heads up, a, a look ahead, that uh, this is where we're heading. This is where we're heading towards. So these trigonometric ratios come from, they come exactly from uh, similar the, the idea of similar triangles. Somebody figured out similar triangles are awfully handy things. Uh, Let's put their ratios in a table. And by the way, let's give them names too. Yeah, we'll call them, we'll call them sine, cosine, tangent. Woo! -hoo. Here's what I really want you to get used to today. So that was all kind of a nice theoretical preparation. Now you have a reason to 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 say, oh, I see why we have trig functions. Um, what we have to do today is we have to be able to figure out. <laughs> we have to figure out. Looking at a triangle. Hey, where's the sign? Which side over which side is the sign? The sign is where? So we're going to practice fi finding the sine arrow. Now remember, there's two ways you can do it. One way is to come back to the Sokotoa thing and say, oh, so the sine is going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse. So what I have to do is I have to figure out which side's the opposite and which side's the hypotenuse. So let's look at this triangle for a second. Which side's the opposite? Well, opposite is when you go through the triangle to the other side. That's the opposite. Again, it matters that where you put your theta. Since the theta is here, we're crossing from the theta through the middle of the triangle to get to the opposite side. If you do that from the 90, you'll get to the hypotenuse, by the way. Or you could just say, yeah, the hypotenuse is the biggest side. So anyway, that's the opposite. That's the hypotenuse. So we should cross our triangle from opposite to hypotenuse, that way. I call that the sine arrow, okay? Because it's telling you which side over which side. If you were setting up proportions, that proportion, or that ratio, I should say, would be the, the sine proportion. The other way you can do it, and this would be easier if I turned on my camera. Maybe I could turn on my camera. <laughs> okay. I gotta be in front of the camera for this to work. Okay, so to me, I guess I'm a, I guess I'm a little spatial. I'm a little spatial in my learning style. So for me, the way I find the sign is here's my triangle, right? I reach through the triangle to the other side, and then I come over the hypotenuse. Did you see that? Reach through the triangle to the other side, and then go over the hypotenuse. Yeah, turn me off. Okay, so I'm gonna do that on this triangle. Here I am, go through the triangle to the other side, and then go over the hypotenuse. Doesn't that seem a little quicker than doing all this Sokotoa stuff? I think so. So here's my theta. Come through the triangle to the other side and go across the hypotenuse. Like that. Okay. Let me maybe do this the Sokotoa thing again, just so you get a little practice both ways. So looking at this triangle over here. Okay, here's my theta. I need to label my sides, right? Where's the hypotenuse? Is it this one or this one? It's the biggest side. Well, which one of those is the biggest? That's kind of what I'm asking you, right? Which one is the biggest side? Because that's the hypotenuse. Well, if, if you think it's kind of close, then you can always say, well, I'll go across from the 90. That's my hypotenuse there. That's my hypotenuse. That's the biggest side. Now again, sine means I need opposite over hypotenuse. So I have to, since I'm up here, since this is my point of view, that's an eyeball, it's supposed to be, I'd have to come through the triangle to the opposite side, and then that would be called the opposite side. And then the sine is start at the opposite, go over the hypotenuse, opposite over hypotenuse, right there. But that is that's actually the same thing as I just said, right? Start at the angle, 
go th reach through the triangle to the opposite side, and then boom, go over the hypotenuse. That's how you get your arrow. Of course, you wouldn't want to draw that part. You'd only want to draw that part. But that's what you do. You go through the triangle to the other side, and go over the hypotenuse. Reach through. Reach through. The sign is your reach through. Yeah. What do you say we do some cosines? Cosines are different. In the Sokotoa world, it's a ka. It's the word in the middle, C-A-H, cosine. Cosine is, this would be adjacent over hypotenuse. So you're back to saying, okay, I have to figure out which side's my adjacent, which side's my hypotenuse. So over here, here I am. I can tell that's the hypotenuse because it's the big side. And I always find the adjacent as the one that's not the opposite. <laughs> so if you come through here, through the triangle to get to the opposite side, okay, that's, that's the adjacent then, right down here. I suppose it would be a little shorter to say it's the side that you're kind of standing on, so to speak. Anyway, this is the adjacent. That's the hypotenuse. Go that way. Adjacent over hypotenuse. That would be the cosine arrow. Now, I'm going to turn on my camera again. Get ready. Here's how I do the cosine. Picture my head as being theta, okay? I'm theta. So I'm in the triangle here, and I want to find the cosine. You do it kind of like an Italian. You go, me, me, you know. You start right next to your face and you go over the hypotenuse like this, like an Italian. Me, like me. <clears throat> I'm from out east. It makes sense if you're out east. Anyway. So here, I'm the theta, right? And I'm kind of like, here's my chin over the hypotenuse, right? It, it's, it's like going right, right, right in front of your face, right by the chin, right over your... Here's, here's, here's where I am. Here's me. Here's my head. Here's my chin over the hypotenuse. Okay, so it's like a real close action. It's close to you. It happens close to you. Cosine. Hey, hey Tony, cosine. Have us some pasta. Get in trouble for saying things these days. Jesus. Uh, where was I? Oh, yeah, this one. I can do the old... Okay, I know that's the hypotenuse, so I know I'm going to be going over that one, right? But you start close to your chin, eh, hey, Tony? Boom. And you go like that. That's the cosine, okay? Of course, you could also have done it by saying, first of all, you know that's the hypotenuse. And if you're having a hard time telling whether this side or this side is the bigger one, you can say, well, it's across from a 90, C. So that's the hypotenuse. So we know that's the hypotenuse. And then you say, well, where's the adjacent? And two ways to say it, you say, well, I'm practically standing on it. So that's the adjacent. Or if you tend to be like me, and I'm not saying this is good, <laughs> it's kind of my crutch. I always find the opposite first for some reason, and then I say, well, that must be the adjacent then. Either way you do it, you're going to have to cross that way, right? Adjacent over hypotenuse is the cosine. Hey, maybe you should try to find some tangent arrows. Well, for this triangle, again, that would be the hypotenuse. If you came through, this would be the opposite, and you're practically standing on the adjacent. Those are the names of the three sides. Tangent is a toa thing. So it means tangent is opposite over adjacent, like this. So I want to cross the triangle opposite over adjacent, which means like a this. Okay? Now, if I were making camera motions, what would I do? I'd basically whap myself in the face. I'd say, here comes the tangent. Whap! Wet myself in the face. So over here, tangent, whap, wet myself in the face. Remember, I'm standing right here. That's like my head. So the tangent does not involve the hypotenuse. It involves the opposite and the adjacent. So you don't go over the hypotenuse. Sine and cosine, you go over the hypotenuse. Tangent, you don't. Tangent, you do not go over the hypotenuse. Instead, you hit yourself in the head using the two legs. Um, this way, I, I could say... Um, Hit yourself, well, that doesn't look like I'm hitting myself in the face, does it? I'd have to kind of come a little closer somehow. Yeah, whatever. You don't have to hit yourself in the face. The idea is to go opposite over adjacent like this. Okay? Again, if you were doing this by labeling the sides, you'd start by saying, well, where's the, where's the, uh, which one of these is the hypotenuse again? And remember, that's the hypotenuse because it's the biggest side. It's across from the 90. That's the hypotenuse. And then you'd say, well, if I come through the triangle, I'll get to the opposite side. And so this, by elimination, is the adjacent side. I can also tell because I'm basically standing right on it. It's the adjacent side. 
Tangent is opposite over adjacent, which means, yep, I did it right. Opposite side over adjacent side. The tangent of that would be you take the length of this side, whatever number that is, you take the length of this side, whatever number that is, and you put one over the other to make a fraction or divide them to make a decimal. Sine, cosine, tangent. Sine, reach through the triangle and then go over the hypotenuse. Cosine, secatoni. Tangent is, well, it's a, it'll get you in the face if you're not careful. The tangent does not involve the hypotenuse, opposite over adjacent. Reach through to the other side, come across the adjacent. And one more example. Evaluate the three trug functions for the angles shown below. Now be careful, every time I throw the word evaluate out there, people think it means go get the calculator, but it does not mean go get the calculator. It means just figure it out. So evaluate the tree functions for the angle shown below. Here's the angle, that's our point of reference, right? Point of view. It's over here. By the way, we know for sure that's the hypotenuse, right? You can always find the hypotenuse easy. And if you want, you can label the other sides. Coming through the triangle, you get to the opposite side, and you're practically standing on what's called the adjacent side. So there, my sides are nice and labeled. So, let's write that Sokotoa thing down one more time. So the sine of that angle is its opposite over its hypotenuse, and the cosine of that angle is its adjacent over hypotenuse, and the tangent of that angle is the opposite over the adjacent. Seems like I can make this a little bigger. Okay. So what you do is you grab the numbers. And in this case, we have numbers to play with. So doing the sign here, I want to take opposite, which is that number, and divide it by the hypotenuse, which is that number. For the cosine of theta, I want to take the adjacent, which is this number, and put that over the hypotenuse, which is the same 65. And then for the tangent of the theta, let's erase some of this stuff now. For the tangent, toa, I want to do, well, it says it there, opposite over adjacent. So I want to take the opposite side, which is this side, 52, and put it over the adjacent side, which is this side, 39. Now let me try this. Let me try this. The uh, Is this visual? What is this? Kinesthetic? I don't know what this is. This is moving your hands. I like to move my hands when I'm learning. It makes more sense if I move my hands. So for me, the sign is where you reach. Here I am. I reach through with my hand to the opposite side of the triangle and I go over the hypotenuse. Boom, like that. That's where I get the 52 over 65. Cool. Now, to do the uh, cosine, I get Italian. The cosine's Italian, don't you know? So here I am, there's my, and it's right by my chin, and I go over the hypotenuse, and I go, me. <clears throat> so it's a 39 over 65 is the cosine. And then the tangent, that's the one where you almost get hit in the face if you're not careful. You have to be careful with the tangent. It might get you. So the tangent, I reach through to the opposite side. And then instead of going over the hypotenuse, I'm coming back to, to the adjacent like this. So it's actually 52 over 39, just like it says. Okay, so one way or the other, you need to be able to get good at identifying which way is the sine, which way is the cosine, which way is the tangent. Now, I formed the sine cosine tangent. Technically, I'm done. from a, in, a, in a math class situation, I'm kind of done. But uh, if you want decimals, then what you do here is you actually divide 52 by 65. And you get, oh, how do you like that? You came out to a perfect 0 0.800. Did this say decimal places? It says six decimal places. Well. <laughs> Okay, six decimal places. There you go. This one here, I take 39 divided by 65. Three-fifths, 0.6. Okay, you said six decimal places. You got six decimal places. And then the tangent, 52 divided by 39. Do, 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 is, uh, whoa, what's this now? It says 1.3 repeating forever. So since it said six decimal places, I guess I'll put six of them the next three would have me not round up.
So six decimal places. Cool. Interesting. Very interesting. So again, if you wanted to, what did I just do? If you wanted to, you could say, well, the sine is 0.8, huh? Let me come back up to that table there. Remember that table there? And I'll look for where the sine is 0.8. So it's it's off the chart. It's off of this chart anyway. It's it's more than 45 degrees, I guess, which I really should write down here. It's over a 45 degree angle. It's off the chart I made. Now I really, oh man, if I ever go to a yard sale or something and I find someone has one of those big trig charts, I'm going to pay them double what they want for it because I want one so bad. Hey, have you got one? If you know anyone with a big old old-fashioned trig table that they used to put on the walls, we got to talk. Meanwhile, I think you're ready to try your homework, right? Yep, yep, yep. Okay. So, katoa, Tony. It's all the same thing. Not edit. And stream is what I wanted to do. So I hope I didn't